If you've just ordered or already received the new DJI Mini 4 Pro, then in this video, we're gonna cover registration with the FAA or the CAA and download a few useful apps, set up your RC controller, give it a few little tweaks, get you out on your first flight. We're gonna fly around, take some videos and photos, land safely, download the images on the computer. But first, I wanna show you this little bad boy, the Air 3. Now there's some interesting similarities here between the new DJI Mini 4 and the Air 3. They really upgraded this Mini 3 to this Mini 4 by adding these little feet, just like the Air 3. We've now got these bug eyes all the way around underneath. So we've got completely 360 obstacle avoidance, just like the new bug eyes on the Air 3. We've now also got the landing light underneath, same as the Air 3. They're both running on the new transmission system, OcuSync 4, so you can use the same controller for these two. So we're definitely looking at a new generation. Now, let's just go back to the controller. So you can either buy the drone with the RC2 or the N2 controller. You can't buy the drone on its own, which was slightly annoying because I already had this controller because I've got the Air 3. So I had to get this controller. Now I've got it, I kind of quite like it. As you can see, it's really small. It's got these nice solid rubbery covered pegs here. And it's really compact. And I actually think if you're going traveling, that's really quite cool. And you will carry a mobile phone. So I think it's quite a good option. I've tried it out and it works exactly the same. The screen, the app, uh, are exactly the same. So I think it's rather nice. To set up your controllers now, what you need to do is, if you're using the N2, is take the control sticks out of the base here, screw them on here. You will pull out the top spring here, and you've got your connection cables in here. And in the box, it comes with connectors for Android and iPhones. Take your phone and connect it in like so. So you'll need to download the DJI Fly app and log into that using your account you've just created on the DJI website. And then you launch the app on your phone and then you can fire up your controller. You press the button down once and then hold it down for four seconds and that fires up the controller and you'll do the same on the drone. You hold the button down once and then hold it down for four seconds and that fires up the drone. And then what you'll need to do is pair these together. The screen will pop up and say, do you want to connect this to the N2? Once these are connected, you'll get a message saying activation successful and then it's going to ask you if you've got DJI Care Refresh and whether you want to bind these two together or go and purchase it, or you can just skip that process. It'll ask you to download the latest firmware, just agree that and that'll download onto the aircraft and then you're ready to go and fly. You hit go fly. Now in the app, the first thing I'll tend to do is go up to the top right hand side to the three little dots and I just want to check my settings. So I'll go along to safety and for the obstacle avoidance I'll put it on bypass. Then I'm just going to scroll down, check my return to home and the return to home altitude is 100 meters, that's fine. A maximum altitude it can fly is 120 meters, that's within the law, that's great. And then gimbal calibration, because this has been in transport, I want to calibrate that. So you keep it on level surface and then you let it just go through the calibration process. Then you just go to confirmation that's successful. Then I'll go over to camera and I'm just going to go to the storage and make sure I'm recording everything onto the SD card. And that's it. That's ready and set up to fly. Now, if you've bought the RC2, slightly different. We'll fire this up. It'll go through initial welcome screen and a setup. And 
you'll be asked to log into your DJI account. These will automatically pair out of the box. It'll take you into the GoFly screen and automatically go to the camera mode. And again, you can do the same where you can just go to the three dots and check those same settings as I did. But before we fire these up and get it all connected, let's first register the drone. Firstly, if you're in the US, you'll need to go to the FAA website. There'll be a link for all these websites in the description below. Also, they've brought out uh, the rule where you need to do remote ID. We don't have that in the UK yet. They're looking at it, the CAA are looking at it, but it's one of those, they will bring it in. Likewise, for the CAA, you just go to this website and you've got all the information there. It walks you through everything that you need to do for your flyer's ID, operator's ID. You just do both, it only costs 10 pounds in the US, it's even slightly less, I believe. All you need to know is there's a few safety rules as well with visual line of sight. It's helpful, especially at the beginning, if you've got a spotter and observer with you, keeping an eye out for anything in the sky you need to avoid or any safety issues. Things you do need to know that your maximum flight height is 120 meters or 400 feet. You mustn't fly over crowds of people in any drone and you've got to stay away from airports obviously and those are flight restricted zones frz's now i'll come back to that shortly and show you how you can just check where those zones are you need to create your dji account if you haven't already done it so you just do a simple setup where you put in your email contact details and create your account and you'll use that when you set up your RC. Now this app, Drone Assist, is really useful. Totally recommend having it. It'll show you where all the flight restricted zones are. Also recommend UAV Forecast for drone pilots. It's a fantastic app. It's worth having the paid version. It's in the UK about 25 pounds a year. But with that, you can do future forecasts uh, the free version is I think just the day and you can put in the settings, the parameters for your drone, the speed it will fly and the height it's allowed to go and what the weather conditions will be at that height. And in fact, there's got a maps in here where again, you can check any restricted fly zones. You insert the SD card here. There's a recommended one that I use that you can see here. And you connect your USB-C charge cable here. And you insert the SD card here, face down, and USB-C charge here. These will come with about 50% charge in them. So put them on fully charge, again, till the four dots turn fully green. Don't leave them on charging all night long because they can overheat and expand. So just give it its full charge until it's done and then take it out from the charger. If you've got the Fly More kit, charge each battery in the drone first because they can be in dormant mode due to travel and this will activate them. And that's that set up and we're ready to go and fly. So for our first flight, there's a few things we want to take into account. The weather. So I know it's not gusting beyond 24 miles an hour, so it's not beyond the flying speed of the drone. We've checked that on our app and we've got a full battery. We've got an SD card in. The radio controller's got a full charge in it as well. The environment is a big open wide space. So to take a drone out for its first flight, to test it out, that's a perfect environment. A couple of accessories I'd advise. One of these is really handy for launching your drone. Also a lanyard so you can uh, put your RC controller attached to it is really handy. Next, we want to make sure we've taken the gimbal cover off, we've taken the, the foam protector away. We then just need to fire this up. You do that by pressing it down once and then hold it down until you hear a little bleep. And then we just put that on our launch pad. Make sure you've attached your control sticks. 
open out the antenna and you can either flip them straight up or have them pointing away whatever works best for where the drone is positioned and you're standing and then just hold the button down once and then hold it down again until you hear it bleep you'll have a red light here and it'll turn green when it's connected to the drone you'll notice along the top it says normal mode and it says takeoff permitted then we're looking along we've got our battery level and then we're looking for satellites and we can see we've got 27 28 connected here so the gps is going to have a good signal and then on the right hand side we're going to just check we are in video mode which we are and then we're just going to launch the drone we are making sure the drone is facing away from us the same way we've got the controller because that means when i move my right stick right and left the drone will move right and left and I go forwards and backwards it will move away from me and then backwards will come towards me. You have to remember when the drone's facing you everything's in the opposite direction. The left hand stick forwards will take me up, backwards will take me down and the right and left will rotate the drone to the right or to the left. To launch we just touch the icon on the left hand side and then hold our finger down on the takeoff and the drone will just rise up. It comes up to 1 to 1.2 metres. And now I'll just go through some gentle manoeuvres just to check everything's working fine. And I'm going to gently move the drone away, bring it back to me and slide off to the right, slide off to the left rotate to the right, rotate to the left, moving it up and down. So now we've got used to those controls, let's just put it into a safe height. I'm going to go up to 50 metres. We can see in the bottom we're looking at the height. So I'm at 50 metres, so I know now that I'm above any trees or people, dog walkers, so I'm completely safe here just to start trying out some different manoeuvres. Making sure I'm keeping good visual line of sight the whole time. If you're not sure where your drone is, you can expand the map. It shows you where your home point is and which way the drone's pointing. So that's very useful. You can see as I rotate the drone round. So now I can turn the gimbal down using the left hand dial. And there on the screen, it's showing the home point. It's showing where I am. It's almost above me. We can see distance from me. It says 11 meters at the moment. I can click photo and now I can take a photo and I can either use the button here or the button here. That's taken a photo. I can use the button here to take a video, to stop taking a video. So these are our quick access buttons here. This is the zoom button and you can see on the video that's zooming in. Coming back to our video modes there, you'll now see we've got master shots. Quick shots, that's where we've got, we've got all our automatic manoeuvres. So I'll just show you a couple of those. So we've got the drone just here, got myself in the shot. So now I can just hit that plus icon and it's selected me and it's going to do a droney shot. I'm just going to press start. We get a countdown and it's just going to pull away and up. And there it is, just moving away. Lovely shot this because it just starts to reveal the environment around me. For me in quick shots, one of the favourite things is of course Asteroid. We'll just show you hyperlapse. So hyperlapses always work nice when there's a lot of movement. I'm going to click on an icon again and now you can see we have pano and this is just where you can do panoramic images. So we're just going to do the sphere. So 
So now just have a quick look at how you do the active track. So essentially you draw around yourself and you can click the active track icon and when you hit go, you'll see in the left hand side, you can tap next and it opens up a wheel and then you can say, well, I want it to track um, from the right hand side and to move around to the left hand side. And there it is, moving round me beautifully as I've marked on the dial. And then we can do parallel. And that'll just keep me in one place on the side. And we have spotlight. And that means wherever we put the drone, it'll just keep me in the center. Then point of interest, you can change the speed of this and the direction. We'll just show you this example here. This is really nice. I've got it smoothly moving around. So if I want to talk to the drone and I don't want to have my hands involved, then this will just track me around really nicely and I get these cool shots. Then lastly, we do have waypoints. So just on the left hand side, you can plan a waypoint route here and you just do it by clicking the C1 button, which is at the bottom here. And then you can move the drone. Yeah. Click another waypoint. Click next, you can click go. The drone's just going to go back to the first waypoint, move to the next waypoint we set, and it's completed the task. You can set multiple waypoints and have a lot of fun with this. Once it's done, it does this rather funky return to home. I just love that. So when we've completed our mission, we can either manually land it or you can hit the return to home button you touch that once and then you hold your finger down on the land button it will return to home and land and i'm kind of interested to see it's got this new landing feature here which is actually marking when it's over the target and that was bang on target so that was really successful landed spot on target so let's just get back into the studio and look at some of this footage well, I hope that's given you everything you need to know to get you up and flying safely. Anything you're not sure about, drop me a message in the comments below and I'll get back to you real quick. If you've not got one of these yet, then there's a link in the description below. And if you want to know more about these RC controllers, then there's an in-depth video over here you can check out. Show me the love, subscribe to the channel here and I will see you over there.